Hi students, good morning. Welcome back to our lecture. In this lecture, we would like to discuss about plant breeding and the various steps which are required for plant breeding to produce new varieties of crops. Understand students? Now you follow each and every uh, concept and content what we are discussing in this lecture. Okay? See, plant breeding, what is plant breeding? For what purpose we follow plant breeding? We discussed already. Okay, plant breeding is a method which uh, com consists of cross hybridization or crossing, crossing which followed by artificial selection in all the local varieties and domesticated plants or uh, wild varieties. Okay, which are there in our uh, surroundings. From long years, continuously these are the plants are selected by nature. It is not easy to su sustain their life forms on the land. Whatever the domesticated plants are uh, local varieties or wild plants we are going to collect to do the plant breeding, okay, they just sustain their life on the land because uh, they are not immediately came from before two years or three years. Okay, their young generations already sustain their life, fix their life on the land from long uh, uh, thousands of years. Understood? Means what? They are uh, naturally selected plants. Understood? They have that much ability to tolerate conditions in the environment. So, such kinds of uh, plants which we collected from our surroundings means uh, wild varieties and the crop plants which has their relatives in the wild species. Right, ma? So, th uh, those plants we collected to do the plant breeding by following uh, various steps and various uh, stages, uh, what already I have given that list uh, sequentially what should followed by the government organizations and uh, okay, commercial companies uh, which they are trying to follow the process of plant breeding for producing new variety of uh, crop plants. New variety of crop plants are called new, new cultivars. New cultivars. That new cultivars has a possessed or has a different characteristic features which possess a characters especially for giving more yielding, which has a more resistance towards pathogens like bacteria, fungi, okay, viruses, and uh, some other. Uh, Mycoplasma like uh, organisms, understood? And uh, they have very much resistance towards uh, insect pests, like uh, different uh, uh, criteria we follow to produce new variety of crop plants uh, which has the uh, abilities uh, and uh, favorable or desirable characters uh, which, with which we proceed to increase more yielding and uh, okay, very good uh, new cultivars uh, through a process is known as uh, plant breeding. Understood students? So, now we better to detail, detail information, we better to know the in detail information about all the steps uh, what sequentially we follow to do the process of uh, plant breeding. Understood? The sequence of steps already I have uh, given that list ma. In that the first one is a collection of variabilities or germplasm collection or collection of germplasm. Understand? The second step it is, what it is? Selection of uh, parents. Okay. Means what it is? Evaluation, selection of uh, parental plants. The plants which we considered as uh, parental plants. We have to select them, evaluate them. Evaluation, selection among the selected plants. Just some, we take 100 plants, we selected as parental plants. In that also, we go to check, we go to evaluate and select some few of the plants with uh, more desirable characters uh, as parental plants. The third step it is, in that particular selected uh, parental plants, we go for uh, cross hybridization. What it is? We go for a cross hybridization. The next one is uh, due to that cross hybridization, what finally we are producing? We are producing a superior recombinants. 
सो क्रॉस हाइब्रिडाइजेशन अमांग दी सिलेक्टेड पेरेंट्स फॉर रा सुपीरियर रिकॉम्बिनेंट्स अंडरस्टूड दैट सुपीरियर रिकॉम्बिनेंट्स वी प्रोड्यूस्ड बट इट इज़ नॉट डायरेक्टली कंसीडर्ड देम एस सुपीरियर रिकॉम्बिनेंट्स इन दैट ओके मोर नंबर ऑफ मोर वैरायटी ऑफ ओके हाईर नंबर ऑफ पापुलेशन व्हिच प्रोड्यूस्ड एस सुपीरियर रिकॉम्� Forms of seeds are uh, new variety of plants what uh, produces, uh, expresses uh, more desirable characters. Understood students? That is a testing and a re, uh, what we call evaluation of uh, superior recombinants. The last one is, the uh, fifth one is, uh, okay, testing release. Testing release uh, for commercialization of uh, new cultivars. Understood? All these are the steps of what we are following, what we discussed in detail, in detail in this lecture. You please pay attention to listen. All these are the important concept uh, for uh, plant, knowing well about uh, plant breeding. Understood, students? Okay. So now you better to list out all the five different uh, types of. Uh, Okay, steps what they are needed for plant breeding in that the first one is means what it is five different five different stages or steps five different stages or steps required. required for for producing producing new variety new variety of crop plants new variety of crop plants crop plants through through plant breeding through plant breeding okay. so what are the five different stages or steps uh, sequentially we followed are required for the production of new variety of crop plants crop plants through plant breeding Understood students through plant breeding. Just you have to enlist already know. Now we discuss in detail information about each and every stage or step which we require to do the plant breeding. You first uh, write down in that the first one is what it is collection of variability. What it is students collection of variability. Collection of variability is the first step in the plant breeding. Understood? Classical plant breeding, okay, composed of or uh, performed by two important uh, processes. What it is? It is uh, crossing and uh, this is the crossing which followed by artificial selection. Understood? So, in that the first step it is uh, collection of variability. It also known as a collection of germplasm. What it is, students? Listen very clearly. Collection of germplasm. Okay. Let us know something about a germplasm. What is germplasm here? Germplasm or collection of variability is nothing but. Germplasm is a collection of different types of plants and seeds. What it is? We just collect. Germplasm is the entire the entire collection of the entire collection of plants and uh, seeds okay already we have uh, local varieties or domesticated plants or wild varieties 
okay just we go and collect all the different varieties of plants which they are present in our surroundings or in the okay environment we just go and collect the plants okay whether it is plant collection or otherwise so many desirable plants and selected plants are there with more seeds then we go and collect the seeds okay for storage preservation purpose okay whenever we need then we collect the seeds and use them for our experimental purpose understood if it is supposed to take here today we are not doing experiment on those particular plants understood how we are going to preserve we are giving life to them understood but we can easy to preserve the plant materials in the form of seeds you know that's why we better to collect the plants and uh, our seeds the entire collection of plants and seeds okay seeds which which are having which are having having all diverse all diverse means a uh, different all diverse traits traits are nothing but already said na traits are nothing but characters traits are nothing but characters all diverse traits okay for all the genes for all the genes for all the genes what it is for all the genes is called as okay is called as is called as germ plasm collection what is the student it is students please what it is germ plasm collection germ plasm collection okay what is germ plasm your yeah, germ plasm is nothing but for future uh, purpose future use whatever the genetic information we are going to preserve we are going to collect for future uh, generations uh, and implementing the program of plant breeding which is the plant breeding breeding is a crucial program very important for program for producing various types of crop plants to do this activity just we go to do this activity with the first step and initial uh, step of plant breeding it is uh, collection of variability or collection of germplasm what is uh, collection of variability or collection of germplasm you just listen here okay what it is okay it is germplasm is the entire collection of plants or seeds uh, which are having all diverse traits for all the genes is called germplasm collection understood so this is a very very important uh, uh, step for uh, plant breeding that's why this is the step we are calling what uh, okay key step or root uh, step understood it is very very important step and initial initiative uh, step which is going to initiate the program of plant breeding now got the point understood students uh, it is the so you please note down this is the very important point that, that is uh, okay it is the it is the key or root key or root step of plant breeding what it is plant breeding okay of course in this step what we are doing is the matter now we now we look into the okay pro program or process what we should done in the particular uh, uh, step of plant breeding like collection of variability or germplasm collection in this what we are going to gather here we are doing collection of different uh, domesticated plants or cultivated plants uh, and their relatives of uh, cultivated plants understood basically this is the uh, step collection of variability consists of different uh, materials these materials what actually they are improved uh, crop varieties we are collecting improved crop varieties we are collecting understood that particular crop variety before itself it is not uh, uh improved by any other methods understood so means what it is a uh, pure plants uh, pure lines uh, we are going to collected pure lines means a uh, wild characters of uh, characteristic features in which plants they are present uh, okay whatever the natural selection done in the plants without any artificial uh, hybridization understood such kinds of plants only we collected uh, by observing their characters 
understood so here improved uh, uh, crop plants we are collecting local or desi varieties we are getting and uh, okay these are going to show okay wild varieties uh, wild or domesticated plants uh, and their relatives okay and their crop uh, plants which has their relatives uh, in some other places uh, though they are not in the okay cultivation though they are not in the cultivation just we gathered them and uh, use they use their uh, genetic uh, variabilities or genetic uh, information understood students so write few lines about this uh, okay first step of plant breeding like collection of variability or collection of germplasm now got the point here yeah, what we are doing here we are doing right uh, we should uh, follow to gather the plants are improved improved varieties of crop plants we for we gathered okay what already we are going to gather plants for our cultivation okay before uh, hundreds of years from hundreds of years or thousands of years so in those uh, particular uh, plants only we collect we collect uh, and their relatives also so these are uh, going to be possess the characters as uh, wild characters that's why these are called wild or local local or uh, desi varieties desi varieties we just collect in the form of plants or seeds now got the point the next one is uh, these uh, crop plants what we collected crop plants okay with uh, wild characters wild characters and its relatives and its relatives are also collected are also collected collected in the process of collection of variability or collection of germplasm now got the point so this is the program we done whatever the varieties we are observing in our local or in, in our nature just we gather them in the we gathered and collect them the entire collection of plants and seeds whatever the products available whether they are available in the directly in the form of plants or if they may have the plants with the more desirable characters or the plants which we prefer to collect them for plant breeding in the form of seeds also we collect it and store them and preserve them the plants cannot preserve in the artificial conditions you know right understood directly we give life to those plants in the soil or in the natural conditions understood but seeds are not like that seeds are going to collected the the entire seed collection you note down this point the entire seed collection seed collection is able to store or preserve able to store or preserve for long time for a long time for long time in a in the conditions of in the conditions of low temperature low temperature okay low temperature in the conditions of low temperature we are going to store the seeds seeds as a preserved material whenever we need to collect them whenever we need to do the some other experimental processes on those plant materials like seeds then we collect them and utilize them understood until the requirement of those seeds understood until the requirement of the particular plants on which we are doing that experimental processes then until that just we preserve them in the okay lower temperature conditions what we provided like you know right whatever the seeds we are collecting and gathered into uh, stored preserved in particular places are called seed banks you know very well seed bank this germplasm collection if you if we collect in the form of seeds we can store them in the bank a place in which we store the we preserve the seeds are called seed bank which is going to maintain artificial conditions which are favorable to sustain the genetic information in the seeds understood the the genetic information is not destroyed 
we just maintain the genetic information by providing artificial climatic conditions to the seeds the seeds after the collection in which place we are going to store or preserve that particular place we are calling what seed bank which maintain very low temperature low temperature for uh, slow down the metabolic uh, slow down the metabolic functions what slowly they are uh, occurs in the seed uh, okay to maintain genetic information for longer time uh, without any without any losing uh, its genetic uh, information or genetic strength uh, in uh, low temperatures we are storing in the seed bank this type of preservation we are calling what ma cryo preservation you know Cryopreservation of seeds, we preserve them in the low temperatures. It is at minus 196 degrees Celsius. Okay, it is at minus 196 degrees Celsius. We are going to store the seeds in the seed bank as cryopreservation. Whenever you need to get the seed for continue the process of continue the process of okay plant breeding, then we collect them. Understood, students? Okay, until that particular period of time, when at which time you are going to collect the seeds from the seed bank? The seeds maximum they maintain genetic strength as it is, which can which which is able to give germination. Germination as a young plant or young okay, baby plants, what they come out of the process of seedling uh, when you provide uh, right and appropriate conditions to the seeds, what you collected from the seed, seed bank uh, in which we preserved the seeds. I got the point. So, this is the process uh, we are going to do as the first or initial step uh, in the plant breeding. I got the point. Now got the point students then now we are discuss about a uh, second step uh, what actually we are going to discuss uh, what it is the second step is okay what it is now evaluation evaluation and uh, selection of uh, selection of parents okay whatever the parents we are collecting whatever the plants we collected here okay to do the cross hybridization in the third step what we are doing before itself in the second step we have to Already we gathered the plant materials. Already we have uh, different kinds of plants with uh, okay, diversified traits for all the genes. Understand? In the process of collection of variability, now we just look into the plants, whatever the number of the plants we collected, whether it is hundreds of plants or thousands of plants. In those plants also, phenotypically, some plants are very good. Okay? Just they are indicating with their phenotypic characters. Uh, phenotypic character means? Phenotypic character means easily observable characters or observable characters of an organism is called phenotype. Understood? Here you better to note down two important terms which rapidly we are using okay, in this particular process. What they are? So, in that the first one is a phenotype and a genotype. Phenotype and a genotype. And uh, pure lines. These terms uh, we rapidly use. That's why we better to know well about these uh, three different uh, terms. What uh, generally we are using here. Phenotype means what? Uh, phenotype means uh, okay, observable. Note down, students. Observable characters. Observable characters of an organism the in the organism whatever the character easy to observe without any test without any test we just directly we observe by observing the living organisms whatever the characters are differentiate from one organism to another organism what characters express out okay visible to us those characters are collectively called as phenotypic characters what they are not phenotypic characters what is the genotype it is a genetic makeup, genetic makeup of an organism, genetic makeup of an organism, organism is called as, called as genotype. What it is? Genotype. Genotype means genetic makeup of an organism. Already we discussed a little bit about uh, phenotypic characters, whatever the external characters we are observing, whatever the okay, physical characters we are observing, whatever the appearance we are observing with their characters, understood? So, what, uh, all those are all those are the phenotypic characters. For example, in the plants, uh, okay, whatever the products we are collecting from the plants like seeds, what is the shape of the seed? 
and the size of the seed, understood color of the seed, and what is the structure of the plant body, whether it is tall plant or short plant, understood. Like that, what whatever the fruit uh, uh, shape, uh, size, color, everything, what observable characters uh, we gathered from the plants is known as our living organisms is known as uh, okay phenotypic characters. To express those characters, uh, like for example, uh, okay green apple. Understood or uh, uh, mango, some are they are red color, some are they are orange color, some are they are yellow, different uh, colors of fruits we are gathering. Understood or uh, different uh, sizes of seeds we, we are getting. Understood whatever the and different uh, uh, height of the plants we are observing, whatever it may be, all these are the diversified characters we seen in the plants, uh, right? Uh, okay, because of genes present in the cell each and every cell which is which already participated in the construction of the plant body or plant products everything only designed that phenotypic characters what appearance visible characters we are observing they expressed from the living forms and products only because of okay only because of genetic information present in each and every cell dear students Understood that genetic information is only, we are calling what genetic makeup is only decides, uh, decides that particular uh, okay, process of uh, what it is. So, genotype. Finally, what it is? Genetic makeup of an organism because of the genetic makeup present in the living organisms and their cells only re responsible for expression of character. Okay, what, did, what is the character expressed out? That is phenotypic character. So, phenotypic characters are just only dip, come out of the body of an individual because of uh, okay, internal factors or body factors, uh, genetic factors play very much role because of the genetic factors uh, or genetic makeup only these phenotypic characters are there understood or produced. So, genetic makeup means what it is the genetic uh, information which is present in the organism for expression of phenotypic characters. Now, pure lines means what it is? Pure lines means what is pure lines? Okay, self-pollinated progeny, self-pollinated progeny in the homozygous plants. Understood? What it is? Simply self-pollinated. Note down students, self-pollinated, self-pollinated, okay, progeny, progeny means young generation or offspring, okay, self-pollinated progeny of homozygous plants. Homozygous plants. Okay. These terms again we are discussing in the topic of genetics. You do not worry about different kinds of terms we are observing like homozygous, heterozygous, okay, pure lines, uh, phenotype, genotype, alleles, traits, like different terms we are using, but uh, it is very easy. First, you focus on this pure lines, self pollinated progeny of homozygous plants. Homozygous plants means uh, the genetic makeup which is present in the Organisms are uh, okay. Whatever the alleles uh, we are observing, all are the similar in uh, okay, similar in manner, similar same type of genes we are observing. Uh, okay, with the uh, same okay alleles, uh, they are uh, going to express their trait or character. Okay, understood. Alleles are the alleles are the fa uh, factors which they are present as genes uh, genes for expression of a trait for, for expression of a trait if those alleles or genes are uh, not similar okay not similar a pair of alleles are required to express of a trait if they those uh, two alleles are not similar then what happens in that condition we are calling heterozygous condition but uh, if the if uh, those two alleles are similar or factors are similar then that is the condition we are calling homozygous Okay, until we are getting homozygous state of the genetic makeup in the organism, just those particular plants are called pure lines. That pure lines are very much needed, required, okay, required to do the, to do the fully recombinated plants, what generally we see with the more desirable characters with the homozygosity condition, what we are going to do in the process of plant breeding, what we initiated the, initiated with the first step, it is a key step and the backbone of uh, any plant breeding program. Understood? You please note down here one more point. What it is? Uh, this is a collection of uh, collection of uh, variability. Collection of variability. Okay, is the is the backbone 
backbone means that is the importance they only reveals its importance in the plant breeding program is the backbone or key or root of any plant program any plant sorry any plant breeding program any plant breeding program you please note down understand students any okay plant breeding program it is the first uh, foremost important or backbone or key or root uh, okay process of uh, any plant breeding okay so whatever the germplasm collection if it is in the form of seeds uh, should be done in the low temperatures and we preserve them in the low temperatures nearly at uh, that much uh, uh, temperature what maintained in the seed banks uh, okay for preserve the seeds for longer time now you got the point now we better to go for uh, discuss about uh, okay second step which is uh, needed for uh, okay continue this plant breeding program understood so already we started with the first step collection of variability or collection of germplasm in this particular collection of variability we gathered many plants we gathered many domesticated plants or wild varieties or uh, improved crop varieties what already we improved okay in our uh, surroundings are their uh, relatives of the crop uh, plants we collect and uh, okay ready to do the next step okay we collected already in the collection of variability it is a prerequisite process for uh, exploitation or uh, producing producing uh, producing more different types of uh, varieties as new cultivars or a new plant uh, crop plants uh, what finally we are producing after finishing the plant breeding methods now got the point so that's why the uh, the particular collection of germplasm is very very important this collection of germplasm and preserve the seeds uh, in the seed bank everything just come under or germplasm collection come under ex situ conservation i think you know students ex situ conservation ex situ conservation means uh, it is just a program done by man okay not uh, uh, performed not allowed by all the people just here only in some centers uh, specific areas uh, specified people and the uh, right and uh, uh, well knowledge people who know something well about that plant breeding as plant breeders are only conducting this process understood so that's why it is uh, come under ex situ conservation students now we are going to discuss about uh, second uh, step of uh, plant breeding method that is uh, what it is okay evaluation and selection of uh, parents evaluation and uh, selection of parents now you please put the subheading evaluation and the selection of uh, parents uh, way from where we are going to select the parents uh, already already we gathered uh, gathered desirable plants with uh, desirable plants with all the desirable traits you know what are the desirable traits we needed already we have a list like uh, okay what it is high yielding okay high resistance towards pathogens and insect pests uh, and uh, high resistance towards external or environmental stresses like uh, drought conditions uh, and they can tolerate the uh, extreme temperatures and salinity so all those are the uh, characters uh, which we are uh, trying to incorporate into the new plant what we are producing through the method of plant breeding understood students so such kinds of plants what we uh, phenotypically observing those traits in the plants uh, in the collection of variability just in that particular collection of variability only again we started to evaluate the plants which are uh, somewhat better than others somewhat better than others so that particular selection and evaluation of all these uh, collection of variability as a uh, for as a collection and uh, sorry selection and evaluation of uh, parents for next process it is uh, okay conducting hybridization cross hybridization in between male and female parents uh, what plants we evaluated and selected uh, from from collection of variability or germplasm collection already we have a group of plants from that plants only we collected and uh, we evaluated uh, better plants with uh, desirable characters as parents in that parents only be ready to do the cross hybridization for producing superior recombinants or uh, producing progeny with uh, more and more desirable characters uh, understood students now let us know something about the second step what it is uh, evaluation and selection of parents so the second step of plant breeding it is evaluation and selection of parents okay first we discuss something well about uh, Uh, this second step of plant breeding what it is 
okay evaluation and selection of parents already we gathered different varieties of plants in the first process of plant breeding is as a collection of variability or germ plasm collection in that different plants are there in those plants we just do a second process of plant breeding is as a evaluation and selection of parents how to evaluate how to select those plants so group of plants are there already in that plants we just focusing our concentration to do the process of evaluation and selection how in the group of germplasm or variety of germplasm we are going to identify the better qualities and combination of characters in which plants they are present okay better or combination of characters or desirable characters what desirable traits we need such kinds of traits in which plants you identified phenotypically you identified phenotypically that particular plants just you collect one or more than one different types of plants you collected you selected you evaluated that particular program is called as okay evaluation and selection of parents in the first step we gathered many plants group of plants in those plants we trying to select some more very few number of types of plants with more combination of characters with more desirable characters and a combination of characters in which plants you identified that the plants you collected and gathered understood for example thousands of plants here we just uh, selected or gathered gathered in collection of variability in that just very few plants with more desirable characters when compared to others very little percentage of plants we collected okay just 1% of the plants we evaluated and selected as parents okay as parents whatever the plants we selected selected in the second step of plant breeding is called parents or parental plants the plants who are going to participated in the cross hybridization for giving young generations now got the point so whatever the young generation we are producing what is our object whatever what, what is our objective or what is our aim the progeny or offspring should have more com, uh, combinative characters or combination characters or very less combination characters with less desirable characters no we requires more desirable characters with a highly effective plants we required that is the matter so that the young generations are to come with those desirable characters they only come from the parents now that's why the parents should be with more and more okay combined characters and desirable characters that's why among the thousands of plants we just evaluated and selected few plants okay one or two or three different types of plants only we collected and those plants just we separate them into two categories like male parents and female parents understood now got the point we evaluated or selected few plants a few types a few number of uh, different types of plants in that plants uh, we categorized them into two categories uh, some are they are okay female parents uh, some are they are as a uh, male parents uh, okay in between these two categories of plants only we are going to do the third step uh, in plant breeding that is uh, cross hybridization among the selected parents now got the point so now you please uh, uh, come and write the information about uh, evaluation and selection of parents okay so what we are doing here the whole germplasm whole germplasm whole germplasm we we evaluate evaluation what are the better quality of uh, plants we seen okay so evaluate and uh, select select the the more desirable plants more desirable plants the whole germplasm we evaluate and select the more desirable plants more desirable plants means the plants which has the plants the plants 
which possess the plants which possess more or high desirable characters high desirable characters high desirable characters and the characters in which plants we are observing those plants only we sell, we evaluate and select so the selected plants the selected plants are called are called parent plants or parental plants parental plants the selected plants are called parental plants okay so here uh, these selected plants are okay one or one or more different types different types of plants plants one or more than one different types of plants we selected plants selected selected by plant breeders plant breeders and categorize them and they categorize and categorize and they categorize into two categories into two categories of plants two categories of parental plants like parental plants like male parents and male parents and female parents to do the cross hybridization requires the parents na with uh, two different uh, gender understood or sex that is we are calling what male and female so male parents and female parents just we get, we separate in the group of plants what we collected okay what we evaluated and what we selected as a parental plants for the next process in the plant breeding now got the point so this is the process we are going to do in the plant breeding as a second step for uh, with which process we are going to do the third process of uh, third step of plant breeding is as uh, what it is uh, cross hybridization among the selected parents so here yes, already we have selected parents in two categories they are present what they are male parents and female parents now we ready to do the cross hybridization in between these those are uh, okay two categories of plants like uh, male and female uh, selected parent plants what generally we have uh, okay what we obtained uh, from the second step of plant breeding is as uh, okay evaluation and selection of parents now got the point students so let us know something well about that uh, third step of plant breeding is as a cross hybridization among the selected parents understood now you please put the subheading cross hybridization among the selected parents uh, for the production of young generations uh, young progeny through which uh, we are going to get uh, new cultivars with uh, more desirable characters uh, okay we are going to get in the process of plant breeding understood cross hybridization among the selected parents it is the third step in the plant breeding okay now let's know something about cross hybridization among the selected parents already we have uh, some plants as the selected plants understood so in between those two selected parents or selected plants okay just we are going to do the hybridization okay two different uh, genetically two different uh, varieties of plants just we selected as parents for conducting the process of cross hybridization that's it understood so what we are doing first we better to discuss later we'll write a few lines as important points for this step understood so here in the second step already we selected some parental plants which are which are more suitable for conducting hybridization for producing 
progeny with uh, superior traits or desirable characters is it right so in the second step we gathered those plants now we considered as a parents in that particular parents we ready to do the crossing we are going to make a cross hybridization in between two okay genetically diverse plants or plant parents okay we trying to combine combine through the cross hybridization to genetically diverse parent plants for producing progeny with uh, superior traits okay producing progeny with uh, superior traits uh, or desirable characters now got the point understand okay this was uh, this was often uh, produced by combining two different uh, okay two different genetically diverse uh, parental plants uh, okay which they are trying to incorporate both the desirable characters from both the parents into a single progeny or a single organism what we are getting as a progeny understood for example one sort of one desirable character is uh, there in one plant ma okay one parental plant uh, okay another desirable character is there but the char character is not there in the first parental plant okay that that character is there very good in the second parental plant now these two with uh, two different characters understood two different desirable characters means uh, okay genetically two different uh, diversities uh, diversities we seen understood characters diverse characters we seen so now these two we consider as parents and we make a cross hybridization between these two parental plants for okay for penetrating or incorporate that okay two different desirable characters into by single progeny or single organism or many population whatever it may be into the progeny we trying to incorporate those two characters at a time in one organism understood that was only the process we are doing we are calling what cross hybridization among selected parents now got the point for example you may take one example for example one one plant is with one very good quality of okay very good quality as a characteristic feature with more protein content understood our quality of proteins we produced from produced from one of the selected parents one of the selected parents understood so one plant has a very rich amount of protein can able to give can can give understood is able to give so that much protein content we are not getting from other plants so that plant we we have chosen as a one of the parents and second parent is a, okay having a very good a characteristic feature is as a, have a more resistance towards a pathogens more resistance towards a environmental stresses or more resistance towards a insect pests understood whatever that uh, respect to character it may have understood then what happens uh, two different individual parental plants have uh, two different characters uh, two different desirable characters uh, one is uh, able to produce uh, high protein content as food uh, and another parent is having a uh, more resistance towards the environmental stress and uh, resistant uh, towards the diseases and disease causing organisms now got the point now what we are trying to do we are trying to do that uh, cross hybridization between these two parents with uh, two different uh, desirable characters understood for incorporate these two characters into the each and every population what it is producing as a progeny with the superior traits understood both the characters will be there in each and every population what it produced as a progeny or offspring understood through the process of cross hybridization that is our objective in this particular step understood students understood students so to get that superior recombinants or new population as of offsprings or progeny with the desirable characters or superior characters or superior traits only because of the cross hybridization what we made in between two desirable parental plants with two genetically diverse okay diverse parental plants understood for the production of progeny with superior traits or desirable characters now got the point understood now got the point so like that whatever the character you may have here just we, we have taken as an example that is protein uh, high protein content as one of the uh, desirable characters and another one is uh, uh, resistance like that whatever the desirable characters you finding out in two different parent parental plants then you just collect them and uh, do 
the cross or made the cross in between those two selected parental plants and uh, produce uh, offspring uh, with more superior characters or more superior traits or more recombinant characters. Understood students? So that is the process we are doing. This is the cross hybridization is a very much a time taking process. It is not occurred within a few days. Understood? It is taking much a time. Okay, it is not a very easiest process. It is somewhat uh, very much a uh, time taking process. Uh, okay, it occurs, it, uh, uh, this process to finish this process requires a long time. Understood? So, it is a very time consuming process and a tedious process. What is the process? It is time consuming process and a tedious process. Tedious process is nothing but long time process. Okay, this process uh, to finish this process uh, take time much. Understood? Prolonged uh, uh, prolonged time uh, uh, is needed to finish this process. That is why this is the step uh, is taking uh, years of time, years of time to get more and more desirable traits of uh, plants as progeny or offsprings. Understood? Different uh, seasons are cooperation, uh, cooperative seasons are required to produce flowers, fruits, seeds. Then again, those seeds we are observing as whether they contain uh, superior characters or not, like that uh, we are doing these activities uh, okay, uh, by taking much time. That is why this is the uh, step like cross hybridization among the selected parents are a uh, uh, very much a uh, time consuming process uh, and uh, tedious process. Tedious process means a long time process. Now we better to uh, write a few lines about this uh, uh, cross hybridization among the selected parents. Uh. And one more point uh, just to listen. Ma. Okay, what it is this cross hybridization uh, we made uh, in different uh, types. So, different types of uh, hybridization, cross hybridization we are observing or hybridization we are observing for getting progeny or offsprings with uh, more desirable characters. That is of uh, like uh, for example, see here intravarietal hybridization, second one is intervarietal hybridization, third one interspecific hybridization, fourth one is uh, intergeneric hybridization. Understood? No? These four. These four different kind, mostly often we see in different types of hybridization methods. Okay. So, uh, for better understanding about all these uh, particular uh, activities uh, as uh, cross hybridization, what we are doing, uh, selected parents, uh, okay, you better to note down all these points, uh, okay, which are very much needed. In that, what is uh, uh, this uh, step? Uh, in this step, we are doing uh, what it is, uh, okay, hybridization. Hybridization, hybridization is a process, is a process where, where we made cross in between in between two genetically genetically diverse diverse parents now you got the students okay hybridization is a process where we made cross in between two genetically diverse parents means we are going to combine to form younger generations okay between two genetically diverse parents uh, to produce to produce a progeny produce a progeny with uh, superior traits what it is students with the superior traits what it explained Superior traits are superior characters or desirable characters. Now, got the point? This is the process we done. In between the selected parents, what already we selected? Understood? Of course, uh, if the selected parents are bisexual, means monoecious condition. If the plants are monoecious condition, means bisexual. Then we have to do, we have to do some activities like what 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 is the activities needed in those uh, 
two parental plants of though they have bisexual if they have bisexual means if they automatically they they have ability to they have a chance to get autogamy understood means within the same flower on the same plant uh, is going to get uh, okay pollen uh, pollination and fertilization so self pollination is not uh, uh, we are not proceed to do here we are doing what it is cross hybridization okay so we are going to give the chance for cross pollination for uh, okay transfer the or combine the two different uh, genetically diverse characters into a into a population or into the population now got the point so that's why if the plants are monoecious means bisexual then in those bisexual plants uh, we have to focus on concentration uh, clearly to separate them into male parent and female parent though just we consider them as male parent and female parent uh, they are not only having a uh, single reproductive organs uh, in the male parent supposed to take male organs uh, only are there no understood in the female parent we are not expecting only the female reproductive organ because those two are the plants are bisexual plants where they are in the monoecious condition in this case uh, what the what the plant we marked as male plant uh, we just only maintain only that particular uh, pollen grains are uh, very much uh, needed uh, for uh, collecting as male gametes now got the point here we, uh, what the plant we considered as female parent we are not give the opportunity for transfer of uh, pollen grains uh, from the anther of the same flower to the stigma of the same flower so that's why we have to do one process here where on the female parent plant or the plant which we marked as female parent in that male reproductive organs in the same flower or on the same plant whatever the pollen grains are there or anthers are there okay before maturation of the stamen before maturation of the antrician we have to remove all the male reproductive organs or stamens the process is known as emasculation already in the 11th class we learned something well about the emasculation process emasculation process is a also called as artificial hybridization because we are we only do that activity not by nature understood we for our convenience sake just we are going to remove the male reproductive organs which are present along with the female reproductive organs of the flower which flowers we are considered as a bisexual flowers but we required here both the reproductive organs are not required for conducting this cross hybridization in the plant breeding because we we have two individual parental plants male parent plant already we made understood but here we only trying to made a female parent so female parent is only maintaining female reproductive organ it's no need to maintain okay uh, that uh, male reproductive organ has a stamen which is present near by the female reproductive organ that's why we have to remove the male reproductive organs like stamen uh, stamens uh, understood during the process of emasculation where we removal of uh, uh, stamens uh, before the maturation of the andrician when the flower is in the budding stage uh, carefully okay by following some uh, okay right and appropriate uh, uh, measurements or precautions by wearing gloves uh, by using all the uh, forceps and uh, scissors uh, for what tools we are using for uh, removal of uh, anthers understood removal of anther or stamen from the okay uh, flower the flower in uh, on which plant it is present that plant which is we considered as a female parent okay to remove all the male reproductive organs from the female parent plant carefully we have to remove them whatever the tools we are using uh, should be get, get uh, very good uh, steri uh, sterilization process sterilized tools we need to use otherwise what happens uh, contamination of different pathogens are uh, placing on the uh, on the reproductive organs then it is uh, it may harm to Uh, conducting this process uh, which is going to give some diseases also so that's why to prevent all these uh, different uh, contaminated materials uh, or pathogens uh, we just use uh, wear gloves the person who are going to do this emasculation process go, uh, should wear gloves understand and uh, use uh, tools uh, uh, for uh, removal of uh, stamen all should be get uh, proper sterilization understood so then we are going to do the emasculation process so here we must uh, do here one more point whatever the bisexual plants we have chosen add uh, chosen as a parental plants in that only we are going to do the emasculation process if we have parent plants uh, like uh, okay monoecious condition or monoecious plants 
mostly monoecious plants are what it is unisexual uh, uh, flowers they they are they bears unisexual flowers so in that particular unisexual uh, uh, flowers uh, in which uh, plants they are present it is a uh, uh, male completely it is a male plant completely it is a female plant because in the female plant only one reproductive organ is only present like uh, because they are have unisexual flowers okay it, if it is female plant it has only the flower has only one reproductive organ that is a uh, gynoecium or uh, reproductive system uh, organ like not system organ like uh, gynoecium if it is a uh, male parental plant uh, in that we are only observing in the flower that is andrisium no other reproductive organ that's why these these are this is the condition we are calling what ma dioecious condition so these are the plants are okay unisexual plants so these unisexual plants uh, if we may have chosen as parental plants we no need to go for uh, we no need to go for emasculation we just go for go for emasculation when the selected parents are bisexual now you got the point now you got the point so come to the uh, information what we need to write here so cross hybridization is very important for producing superior characters sir understood often this is the pro, this particular uh, superior characters and production occurs often often this production often this production occurs occurs by combination of combination of two selected parental plants two selected parents for example one parent plant one parent one parent with a desirable character like a quality of protein a good quality of protein good quality in protein is a desirable character what we seen in the plant one supposed to take it is a plant one one <coughs> parental plant one and another plant and another plant one more plant parent with a high resistance high resistance to pathogens high resistance to pathogens or environmental stresses whatever it may be pathogens then two different desirable characters we are observing okay that is the first desirable character is a quality in protein it is the first desirable character a okay here second desirable character is uh, high resistance uh, to pathogens it is the desirable character b so now we are trying to incorporate these a and b these uh, uh, two into one generation understood or into one population which is going to possess both the desirable characters uh, as uh, offsprings understood so this is the main activity we are doing to, we are going to do in this uh, third step of plant breeding as a cross hybridization students understood in this uh, cross hybridization in this cross hybridization okay whatever the process we are going to do for example here you know these two are the different characteristic features uh, uh, should necessary to combined combined into young generations uh, we must do some processes like uh, what already we discussed like uh, what it is okay transfer of uh, pollen grains from anther to the stigma stigma of two selected parent plants selected parent plants so that is so pollen transfer the first character is pollen transfer what it is students pollen transfer we have to transfer the pollen grains from the selected male parent to the from the selected pollen transfer from the selected male parent selected male parent to 
the selected female parent female parent okay already selected parent means uh, they have their they have our interest in characters understood so in this cross hybridization we have to transfer the pollen grain from the selected male parent to the selected female parent it is not occurs naturally of course the transfer of pollen grain occurs by nature only of course through anemophily or entomophily but what happened here just we are doing this is the artificial process man made process that's why we only responsible person who are going to select the male and female parents then we collect the pollen dust or pollen grains uh, which we collected from the uh, selected parent male parent uh, to transfer that pollen grain what we collected from the anthers of uh, selected male parent to transfer it to the stigma of selected female parent what should necessary to do the process as a cross hybridization among the selected parents understood now got the point understand students so here okay suppose if they are if these plants okay male and female plants parental plants male and female male and female parents are unisexual 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 then then we no need to go for we no need to go for emasculation for emasculation process emasculation process but when the emasculation process is needed when when selected male and female parents are bisexual monoecious bisexual or monoecious in condition okay when the selected male and female parents are bisexual then we need to go then we have to go or we need to go need to go for emasculation process already in the 11th standard we learned something well about uh, something about uh, something well about uh, emasculation process so emasculation process understood i think once you recall the emasculation process how it is uh, taking place in the emasculation process we have to remove what is the process we are going removal of uh, anther removal of anther or removal of uh, okay stamen stamen okay stamen from immature immature flower the flower is in the budding stage the flower is in the budding stage just we go and uh, remove the anthers uh, from the plant uh, the plant uh, which we considered as uh, which we marked as uh, female plant uh, just we left uh, female reproductive organs uh, like uh, gynecium we should not give the we should not give the chance for uh, location of or staying of male reproductive organs or anther or stamen okay before maturity we have to remove them otherwise what happens if we uh, remove them slowly after the maturation of the flower what happens the stigma may get a receptivity then if it may get pollen grains okay from their neighbor anthers which they are present in the same flower so after that if you are going to do the cross hybridization or cross pollination then it it may not give a proper results as superior recombinants of progeny what we are expecting that's why before maturation of gynecium and andrisium at the budding stage budding flower bud is the indicator ma okay a flower is in the budding stage means it is the indication the reproductive organs are in the immature in condition when the flower all the petals when it when they opens it is the indication yes that is the plant indirectly says to us yes the reproductive organs are ready to 
conducting pollination, getting pollination, which is basically need to get fertilization. Now you got the point? So before uh, uh, open the flower, we better to remove all the anthers from the bisexual flower. Uh, the flowers uh, which is uh, present on the plant, uh, a plant uh, which we marked as female plant. Understood students? So, like that we remove the anther uh, by using you know different processes we are following like bagging process. You please recall the information about uh, emasculation, bagging, after that uh, okay dusting. Dusting means what it is, uh, okay we have to okay. We have to uh, dusted the pollen grains, dusted uh, the pollen, pollen, right pollen, pollen means a uh, right pollen is needed. Otherwise, what happens? You know very well. It is not. It is going to give incompatibility. Okay, incompatibility in condition. So, right pollen, dusted the right pollen. Okay, on, on stigma which is matured, stigma, right stigma. This is a stigma in, in which flowers we are observing the flowers on the selected female parent. Now got the point. So on, on the stigma which is uh, in a maturity in condition that is indicating that uh, maturity we understanding with this term that is receptivity. Receptivity in condition. A, a stigma which is uh, in a receptivity in condition which is a maturity in condition which can easy to receive uh, pollen grains uh, when they are right in condition. Okay. So, compatibility is going to be taking place to do further activities uh, as a post pollinating processes which are needed for getting fertilization. Now, you got the point. So, like that uh, we, we are going to do the artificial hybridization through the transfer of uh, right pollen grains from the selected male parent to the right uh, stigma receptivity in which uh, flower we are observing. Uh, uh, which, uh, observing on the selected female parent understood that is we are calling cross pollination we are we made as a cross hybridization for the production of for the production of what it is superior recombinants for the production of superior recombinants recombinants in a progeny in progeny, you please note down students, in progeny, superior recombinants or trites we generally see in a progeny. This is the process we made, okay, in particular uh, step that is cross hybridization among the selected parents. Okay, next we go for uh, a little discussion of uh, different types of uh, cross hybridization, understood?